it's a gravity propelled system. They saw it in the sky before they saw it in the water, right? Yeah. So there was um, there were radar that was picking this, these things coming down from eighty thousand feet and dropping to fifty feet in less than a second. This is it, Jamie. What is this? Dude, this is actually on the news today. There was a so, briefing. So a lot of people get this confused. Oh, not this one then either. No. So th or, th that is called the gimbal. So th there's three okay. videos released by the Pentagon that are all actual. Just play and keep the volume off. Okay. I would I would really just pay attention to the source videos. So you've got the Tic Tac, which is this object that Commander Fravor saw. Another pilot filmed it with a FLIR pod, and it goes Toop. But this one you see is really important to Bob's story. The gimbal craft, it's been recently analyzed. It's FLIR. Not only does it, it it's definitive that it's not a conventional anything by the by its movements, but there's a pocket of cold air around a propulsion source. So this object, by the way, sat stationary uh, for days, if not weeks, it sat stationary. Yeah, they found it 11 hours later, and they were saying there's no way this thing, using that kind of energy to go that fast, could just right. hover for the 11 amount of hours. time. And by the way, you're seeing a very small part of what happened that day. This object was not alone. And so hopefully that information comes out, and we can, I mean, I wish we had video of it. I'm sure we'd all want to see it. But that's called the gimbal. That was East Coast, right? 2015. West Coast, 2004, was the Tic Tac. The disturbance on the water, Commander Fravor believes there was something under that water that was causing that disturbance when the Tic Tac was coming around and doing it. With inside the, the people that are studying this, they're thinking maybe the Tic Tac system was causing the disturbance, but the USO, unidentified submerged object, that, that he visually saw... Uh, the whole interesting thing about that is, I would love Bob to describe it, is why it doesn't matter if these craft are in space, air, or water. Why doesn't it matter? I love when he talks about this shit. Well, first of all, Commander Fravor was the F-18 pilot off the Nimitz that was sent out to find out what this stuff is. But uh, And it wasn't just, I got a, a chance to talk to him recently, and it wasn't just a radar image. I mean, Commander Fravor had eyes on it for over five minutes watching this thing, as four other pilots did. So this wasn't a radar blip or anything. I mean, these guys were watching this thing. But, um, you know, one of the things I think in the gimbal video, the way the craft that we worked on flies is it doesn't fly like a conventional aircraft does, and it doesn't fly like a flying saucer would in a 1950s movie. It flies belly first. I mean, it may set down conventionally, but it always rotates. It does a roll maneuver, puts its belly towards the target, and then moves away so at high speed. So it would be like a car flying with the wheels forward. Right, right. I mean, it may lift it, land on the wheels, but at some point when it wants to leave, it it's going to flips up, points the wheels where it wants to go and takes off. And the gimbal video, you can see the craft do the roll maneuver. And uh, it's really interesting. It behaves exactly like the craft that I worked on. So much like we have different shaped aircrafts and fighter jets and cars, they probably have different shapes of these objects that operate under similar principles. Right, Perhaps. but they all have the same power source. They all have the same power source. And we're also dealing with, if you think about the laws of technological progression, you know, you think of Moore's Law and you think of how things accelerate, you've got to think that if this civilization is who knows how many years more advanced than we are, if not even years, I mean, I mean we're thinking about in terms of conventional terms, right, the way, the way we look at the world. I mean, they, may, they might be just superior in terms of their intellect. They've got to be. Maybe. Maybe. We, we don't know, right? Well, the only reason I, I say that is because, look, everyone doesn't necessarily start at a steam engine right. and go to an internal combustion engine and then, you know, electric power, nuclear power, and go up the ladder that we right. come on. Um, you know, the binary, if the stuff is true about the origin and the binary star system and they have heavier elements that we don't have, and this element, stable element 115, is a naturally occurring material, maybe that's the first thing they started experimenting with. And the version of their steam engine, their first product, was something that operated like this. And actually, when they came to Earth to look around or, you know, whatever, they were amazed at the stuff we were doing. These guys burned stuff and squirted out the back to go forward. So, right. um, 
Right. You know, who says they follow any kind of normal progression like that? My my thought was if you went back to the 1400s and then you went from 1400 to 1500, you're not going to see that much of a difference technologically. Right. If you go from 2000 to 3000, I assume there's going to be a radical change. Right. Well, the yeah, the delta, the rate of change yeah. is is magnificently higher than it used to be. Right. So if you think about what they had in 1988 and you think about what they probably have in 2019 just logically it seems like they would advance i would think so the only question is like are they living is that a living thing in terms of like a biological thing or are they some sort of an artificially created creation like we are working on right now i mean we're in the middle of working on artificial reality, artificial beings, sentient beings, artificial intelligence. There's constant there's silicon based life forms that they're essentially trying to create. Boston Dynam or was it Boston Dynamics at the company? You, you can make robots, robots. Yeah. robots. Yeah. yeah. You can make machines out of flesh, yeah. right? So right. a cyborg or a cybernetic right. organism is just that, you know, that's what a lot of people think those like gray things are, you know, that people call the grays. Yeah. Is like they were like they're machines right. printed from flesh. So what you're saying is like not well, they so could just be no. synthetic life. Synthetic they don't life, even need yeah. to be, right. you know, machines. Right. Well, they, they seem to have no sex organs. The way they're described by people that have had interactions with them, assuming these people aren't liars right. or crazy or whatever. Right. That they have no sex organs and that they don't seem to have any muscle. They're just almost like a frame. Right. And they have enormous heads. I mean, if you look at australopithecus or depictions of you know ancient hominids and then you go to human beings one of the things you see is bigger heads and weaker bodies well you see a clear progression of evolution too where for something like that i would lean towards a synthetic organism because it looks like it was made for a specific task there's no reproductive organs so i mean that almost kind of leaves out any kind of you know, physical evolution. Right. Well, yeah. that's also our bottleneck, right? Our bottleneck is our biological imperative. The the need to breed, emotions, fear, anxiety, right. all these different things that exist in order to force us into making sure we reproduce. I mean, that's essentially what it is. There are human reward systems that aren't necessary once they can figure out a way to make some sort of sentient artificial right. life. Some sort of thing that doesn't have these biological limitations that we have. By right. the way, the, these craft, all these different kinds have been reported because it was confusing. I always thought of flying saucers as what I heard Bob Lazar talk about, flying saucer, right? But if you look back in history, people have always reported the weirdest shapes. Like, none of them are alike. You know, there, there are the saucers, but you got cigar shaped. You got, you know, the top hat shaped. Mm. You've, you have orbs. Why? Maybe they're serving different purposes. They're doing different things like we'd use different tools. And I, I want to be clear, the, the reason I know that memo is, is real is because I spent a lot of time with Dr. Edgar Mitchell, sixth man to walk on the moon, last guy to film him before he died, right? That's how I know I don't want any journalists thinking I got it from anywhere else. I know because of Dr. Mitchell, and he said the same thing.